here we go with a 96 GMC Suburban where the windshield wipers work but the windshield squirter stopped working uh, fuse is good on the windshield wiper motor so according to my trusty uh, YouTube friends this is all I have to do to take off this back cap and do some soldering and I should get my squirter back to squirting so I'm going to take you along with this little journey and I did have to pick the hottest day in Southern California to do this Ooh. first thing is this blue plastic I don't know what it's for but we're gonna pull it off nothing damaged so that's cool now what we're going to do is take a t20 torque driver and we're going to take off this cap there we go tight it on i just don't want to lose the screw Ooh, it's warm too i think I just got to be driving this vehicle, which is not probably the smartest thing in the world to do, and then try to work on it on the hottest day in Southern California. this where I will remember where it's at How about right there and I'm standing on a ladder to get into this vehicle because it's high off the ground you know I don't even need this ratchet I think I can do it with a uh, by hand last one this is a factory recall I think from 88 to 98 it took them 10 years I guess to figure out they screwed this pooch on this one okay now what we need to do is pull this cap off and then pull this out It's a little tight. It's a little tight. It's a little tight. I do have them all off, don't I? I don't think I have any more. Some of them are glued on. Set up a little vibration. 
and hope that shakes it loose. I got my mirror over here. Let's take a look. Make sure we got all the screws out. Appear to be all out. time for a rubber mallet. Maybe it's time to get a rubber mallet. Back with my hammer. This ought to do it. It's rubber, the mallet. I think this one is glued. It appears that it is glued. Huh. Well. stop and see if we can get this off okay it's starting to come off now it's starting there we go a little bit of a pry this is where I need to grow another hand It's about a quarter of an inch away from the from the base. I still have a cable to take out over here. cable off first. this up or push it down or something. Well, there's that. Well, I gotta figure out how to take this off. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
fight me the whole way, I guess. That's why I quit working on cars years ago. Damn things. Okay, there we go. Well, let's take it inside and see what happens. It looks so easy on the video. You see here this cap is still on the circuit card. And I need to solder behind this connector post right in here. Which means this has got to come off. And it looks like it's bonded in. Which is not good because I don't want to break it. I don't want to break the bad boy. I have no idea how much this costs. I get one of my fine tools in there. See if uh, I can get some leverage underneath this card. This one's obviously been glued, I guess, to weatherproof it. That was one of the other complaints, too, is that water could get in to this thing because of its position on the firewall. This one appears to be really sealed. And that's not good from a repair standpoint. Because how can I get to it to fix it if the thing is still sealed? There's adhesive if I can feel the, the rubber still hanging on. But maybe if I just work it slowly along the edge here. It says on this PC board it's Rev C. So maybe Rev C was to make it waterproof. Which they did. And I still don't know for sure whether the resoldering that switch is going to cure the problem. Okay, I'll come back when I've gotten a little bit further. It looks like I've loosened up the seal around here. So it is almost ready to come apart. Uh, my golly. Just little by little. There we go. There we go. to be soldered and the switch connector is along here these guys just heat up the iron and go over them I wonder if they have any coating on these things sometimes the Coating is a problem. I got one more up here with the rubber on it. We'll see if we can get some of that stuff off of there. 
It's like old rubber that's gotten hot and or aged and melted a little bit. Not melted, just old, deteriorated. It's coming off a 1996 car, so that's that's what 20 years old. I just get them broke in that age. Okay, pull that cap off. Not to worry about that part anymore. Probably be a good idea if I use some kind of a RTV silicon on this thing when I put it back together. But I'm not going to. Okay. Now. take out the serious stuff. Take a look. Well, it appears that this switch bracket is held in, P in place by two plastic rivets that are split in the middle so when they go through the hole they'll expand. I don't know if you can see that from here it's right there right there's where I want to get to those black things that's what's holding it together besides the solder so Heat the iron up and commence to melt me some solder. I decided to, while my iron is heating up over here, and I got my damp sponge to clean the tip of the iron off, and I have my spool of 30 year old solder that I would shine up the tips of the areas that I'm going to reheat should there be any type of insulation on it. I'm not quite sure about this tip one closest to the switch. Seems a little peculiar. <laughs> In fact it looks like whatever solder is on there is very slight. Sometimes they paint these things with some kind of an insulation material, like a fingernail polish, applicator. That's what this pink stuff is too, that's on here. One of my first jobs was stuffing these little parts into circuit boards and for uh, Honeywell Electronics. That's the old conveyor system of parts circling like an electric kid's toy train and it's in a circle and about 20 people sitting around the, the track and these cards would come there. Well you'd give, they give you the blank card with no parts on it, no components resistors and stuff and your job was to five little plastic containers side by side would be filled with the same part and you have to put the pick up the part stick it in the circuit board bend over the leads clip the leads grab the next little bucket of parts put in the part you can see how small that stuff is yeah that was my first job lasted about three months because the boss kept on had a remote control like you do with an electric train and he keeps on cranking it up so that it goes around this track faster and faster and faster and the track is probably 20 feet long and so all of the workers had their tongues hanging out and they would they would do it in 15 minute spurts 
and then they would give you a 10 minute break and then 15 minutes of like a little monkey reaching out get that peanut stick it in there clip clip the, the leads clip clip and then once you got through with that you'd pass it on to the next monkey and the next monkey would have a circuit card with all the little parts stuck in it and this part right here is they would solder but they had a machine that called a wave soldering machine and it would make an actual liquid wave of of solder and the circuit card would just go in there and go whoop I mean, go over that wave all soldered at one time and they used to use peanut oil to clean off the card before they soldered it and so the office or the factory floor smelled like peanuts and popcorn that was one of the benefits you can unless you were allergic to peanuts and not that in those days there was nobody allergic to peanuts that only happened in the 80s and 90s I'm talking about back in late 60s okay yeah that one doesn't look like it has any solder on it okay swipe off the hot iron Let's see, I guess it's a little bit better on this side. Oh, yeah. Quite a little bit of solder. Safety glasses first. If you do this, make sure you have safety glasses on. You don't want to have hot solder in your in your eye. That is not a good thing. And the trick is not burning the circuit card while I'm doing this. Do we get one down? Another one. Cold solder joint means that it's has the appearance of being a good solder connection, but there's actually a little bit of resistance between the component lead and and that's not a good thing. So what I'm trying to do is heat these things up and then apply a little bit of additional solder. And all along, not try to damage the, the component, the switch. I only have the first three done. Let's see. You just don't want to get too hot. Just where the solder liquefies. And then remove the heat source. And also the component, the part that's hooked in here, the electrical connector, with uh, more heat, is more heat's required because of the mass, the size of the material. The number of, of uh, there's always connector pins and stuff inside there. Those act like a heat sink, and they will draw the heat away from the iron and away from the connection so maybe that's what the problem was originally when uh, they were manufacturing this stuff yeah I still got some heat there melt that solder let's try this guy there 
almost melted. Almost melted. Well, that's a general idea. Let me finish this. I think I'm ready to put it back together. I cleaned up a little bit of the contacts here. There's two contacts here and here. And then also inside here there are contacts. I tried to scratch those. Got to clean those up. And then that's how it goes in the vehicle. And I need to take some more of this rubber stuff out of the way so it doesn't cause me any problems when I'm trying to tighten this thing back up. You see that? A little notched out for that screw to go through. Okay. Well, time to go out and reassemble. Plug this iron. Hopefully, it won't catch anything on fire while I'm outside. Catch you in a minute. Yeah, we gotta go out and try to reinstall this in the vehicle. I didn't run the battery down. Let me go out and check this out again. Wouldn't that be a sad state if I ran the battery down? time to put this thing back together after I went fishing for it I dropped it right in the front of the engine compartment down deep had to use my little special tool to retrieve it okay let's see let's see here Man, you gotta be an acrobat nowadays. I wonder if that grease is supposed to be there. That's a heck of a lot of grease. Maybe it's time to wipe it off a little bit. Okay, let me wipe this grease off. It seems like an awfully lot of grease on here. Our lubricant. Whatever the hell it is. Looks like slip rings if these brushes are on.
cap on first. This one's on. Now we get another one. Okay. Well, hard parts almost over. more time around just to make sure damn rubber hose in the way account okay. for all my tools now He's connecting the connector. Okay, we're got all the tools. I'll climb up here and get the rest of this. Thing left to do is give it a test. Uh, the squirters, I want to point those out. The squirters are here and about six inches over to the other side. So let me reposition the camera. Then we're going to give it a test. Yeah, you should be able to see the one squirter is over on the other side of this hose thing coming down. The other squirter is right here. I'm going to go turn the car on, not the engine, just the, just the car, and see if the squirter works.
let there be squeaky squirty water now works like a champ so you can believe some of the stuff you see on YouTube thank you YouTube for giving me the hints where I needed to be to get this one working that quit on me hope it's helpful to anyone out there having a similar problem on an 88 to 98 General Motors uh, truck vehicle see ya So in summary, education, perseverance, and just doing it pays off in the end. So now I have washer squirters on my vehicle again. Yeah, check out some of the other YouTube videos on this subject. Uh, you'd be amazed. There's all kinds of different ways to skin a cat, as they say. Different ways, different ways. But this is the cheapest way. All it cost me was a little time and Luckily, no scrapes or bruises, grease though. And when I did the soldering with my, th I think this is nearly 35 year old soldering iron, I didn't burn myself. That's a good thing. Okay, hope this helps.